Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today we're going to be starting on part two of this little claw hammer forging. So in the first part we went ahead and forged the eye or drifted the eye open to a round. All I've done here is I've squared the bar back up to take and create an oval. Now what we're doing is we're hammering approximately about a half inch or 12 and a half mil off of the one side of the drifted eye. Now it's very important not to do your final drifting at this point because we've got a lot of stock manipulation that we have to do. So we don't want it to be to the full final form just yet. We just want to take and have the eye set in place. So this way we're not trying to punch and drift a weird shape object. Plus, because of the drag through that the drift has when it goes through the actual piece of steel, the billet of steel, we definitely want to make sure that we have most of the eye formed so this way there's no distortion later on when we actually do the splitting of the tines. But there we are, just some half on half off blows, and we're going to continue that. And continue that and then work at forging these tines out away from the eye of the hammerhead. Pretty simple deal. This is going to look chunky at first, but it's going to elongate. It just takes the time because there is a lot of mass here you're trying to move of 1045. If you remember correctly, it was an inch in this direction, an inch in a quarter to about inch and three eighths the opposite direction. Forgive me for not knowing the metric of those half sizes there, but uh, I'll get better at metric soon enough. I'm getting a little out of practice. I used to say it in almost every video and attempt to, but uh, uh, I've been getting away from it here steadily. But we'll get back to it. So as you can see, we're pulling that out. Essentially, this is just wash, rinse, and repeat until you get the, until you get the claw portion of the hammer out to the distance that you want. Now we're going to flip this over and do the same thing, move about a half inch off of the eye of the hammer or 12.5 mil and then we're going to go ahead and hammer in where we're going to segregate out the hammer face itself. Now some may ask, well why didn't you forge it down first? And the reason why you didn't forge the face down first is because you need to isolate it from the actual body of the claw hammer first. If you don't isolate it first, you get more of a taper. Um, or you'll have a really sharp set down there and it will be very difficult to actually get the fuller in there after that, that set down and make a nice clean fuller line. And what I mean by that is to take and have it nice and even on all four sides. And that's what we're trying to attempt to do here. Now what that's going to make is that's going to make the face look quite large, but that's okay. That's when we'll take and hammer and forge that to shape a little later on here. So you want to rotate it and flip it end for end. And you're seeing another guy here in my shop. This is my brother. He gives me a hand every now and then when I get backed up on orders. So a big shout out to my brother Tony. Uh, for coming in and being a sport and helping me do some polishing while I was working here. This was actually for a customer's order here, so this isn't like me fooling around for YouTube and allowing him to do all the work. But uh, anyways, this, this is actually for a customer job too. There was a lot of orders that had to go out before Christmas, so that's what you're watching here. But anyways, there you go. So now we got a really nice groove all the way around this hammer, and that's really what we're wanting. So after we have that part done, now we're going to flip it back around. And, you know, once we've forged our face the way we want it, we're going to flip it back around and we are going to use a cold chisel. Now it's very important that you use a cold chisel for this and not a hot chisel. And the reason for that being is the cold chisel with its bevels ground to 60 degrees, okay, 
allows you to get a very broad slot like you see in the claw hammers. If you use a very narrow chisel, like a 30 degree chisel, that is found in doing hot cutting work, you are going to have a lot less results when it comes to that. If you use the small slitting chisel, it is just going to take and cut through the piece, but it won't provide those inner banks. And then you'll have to grind that or file that to shape later on. And so we don't want to have to do that. We want to take and make sure that we include this in the forging. So using a nice broad cold chisel is about the perfect thing that I have found for this. And you want to make sure that you cut all the way down to the plate. And what I'm doing here is I'm kind of rocking it back towards the hammer head itself and trying to get that leading edge there to really cut and bite down heavy down through there. Now the cleaner the job you do of this, the less cleanup there in the crotch of the of this claw hammer you'll have to do later. And you might want to think about just getting a cold chisel made specifically for this purpose if you're going to make a lot of them, maybe with a rounded front. But after it's been split, and you've got it split open here, now we'll go in and we'll do our final drifting to size. Now here, the, the top side closed up a little bit, and I decided against doing this. I couldn't force it down through there. So I go in from the bottom first and start drifting it to the proper hammer size. And then I'll turn it around and I'll go in through the top and actually drift it to its final size and dimension. But this just helps open it up to where we can flip it around and get it on the other side. So one of the next things that you're gonna see me do here is I'm gonna go ahead and flatten the sides because you're gonna get a little bit of a swell out on that. That's okay, but that's not what you're really wanting. You're wanting to keep this nice and true and square, especially when we go to ornamentate this thing later, like do all the chasing and the engraving work and uh, for this particular uh, ball peen hammer, or sorry, claw hammer. Get my hammers mixed up. But now you can see that it's really starting to look like a claw hammer. And this is pretty exciting once you get to this point. So it's kind of wash, rinse, and repeat until you get the eye drifted to the right size. Uh, there's not a whole lot of magic here about this. It's just, you know, uh, taking your time with it. Make sure your drift goes through square and clean. And as you can see, I have dropped this thing more times than not. Uh, a claw hammer is a little bit of a weird size of a thing. If I get into making much more of these, this is the second one I've made. If I get into making any more of these, I'm going to end up designing some special tooling just for messing around with claw hammers. I don't get that many orders for claw hammers, but uh, mainly just because of the cost and they're kind of a ceremonial thing that I make. These aren't for practical purposes, although they're made to be used. But that's a story for another day. So we're going to tap that out, and like I said, we'll have some dressing to do on this and some cleanup work that's going to have to happen. But this is how you do it. So you can see it's getting pretty well to shape and to size. So that's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure to just check out part two when we finish this thing up. Thank you all for watching. God bless you and we'll catch you on the next one.